Hi, this is Paul Swider, and we're live from uh, SP TechCon in Boston. And I have the pleasure to be here with Eric Overfield. Uh, both of us have been interested in working with, the, uh, with blockchain technology, spe specifically the uh, Microsoft tools. Uh, Eric, why don't you take a minute and, and introduce yourself, and then maybe we can work on dispelling some of the myths around blockchain, if you will. Excellent. <laughs> hey, all, my name is Eric Overfield, president and co-founder of PixelMill. I'm a Microsoft Regional Director, Microsoft MVP in both the apps and services space and office developer space, which has nothing to do with blockchain. <laughs> um, but I'm a developer. My background is heavily development. And when I saw what blockchain did, and in particular how it was built, my developer geek spider sense just went nuts. And over the last year, I've been spending a lot of just my personal time getting into blockchain, learning what it is, trying to present on it, and trying to help people understand the basis of blockchain so that in a year, in three years, when they're ready, they'll understand the basics to then build those cool solutions. I love that. I, I think when I, I had the same feeling when I started looking at blockchain, I, I think it was my inner geek mm -hmm. uh, that first sort of just sparked up. And then I, I, uh, I, was, I was fortunate. So, so Paul Swider, much of the same background as Eric Overfield. I, I come from a developer background. Uh, my primary focus uh, over the past uh, 20 or so years has been the Microsoft stack in healthcare. And, and so just like Eric, when it comes with blockchain, my inner geek lit up. Um, I, I was fortunate enough that um, at, also recently we have some healthcare software that needed to be upgraded. And so w what's been interesting is we've actually been able to work on some real life use cases around healthcare and also some community code for donations. And maybe we'll have a chance to talk about that. But so we're done with introductions, so now let's get to the good stuff. So Eric, one of the things I've noticed here being at the conference is that there's a lot of confusion about blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, folks just don't seem to have a grasp on what it is. I hear some people talk about it as a database. I hear some people talk about it uh, in the context of cryptocurrency and, uh, and the various uh, alt alternate uh, crypto coins and you know all the stuff that's out there now and then you know then I hear other people talk about it in the context of smart contracts mm -hmm. and, and so what are your thoughts around this and and how do you uh, help dispel some of these myths or explain this to your peers and colleagues if Absolutely. you will yeah. so the first thing I like to look at is that blockchain mm -hmm. is the underlying technology of Bitcoin so most of us have not heard of blockchain but we've heard mm -hmm. of Bitcoin it's been all the fad, it's been all the news, and it's been plummeting in value, which is actually probably a good thing for what blockchain really is, this mm -hmm. underlying technology. And what we've now sort of called that is more enterprise blockchain. Mm -hmm. Blockchain itself, an easy way to think about it, is it's a distributed secured ledger. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's just a list of events that have occurred, a list of something that's occurred, that's recorded, and it's secured in such a way that it basically cannot be changed. It's distributed across a lot of participants that don't trust each other. But through a security algorithm, through a consensus algorithm, we all trust each other even though we don't trust each other. So we all know that this ledger of things that have occurred, an exact order of things, has happened, it's secured, and it has not at all changed. It is not a database, by the way. I want to keep saying that. Like People like to look at it as like a relational database. It's not. And when you start mm -hmm. thinking that way, it does start to uh, get a little hazy. Yeah. And that's interesting. I, 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 I um, like what you're saying about the fact that it's not a database because I think that's important. And it's important to make the distinction between the distributed ledger technology and a database. Uh, what I do, I like to uh, make that distinction by, as you said, giving the de uh, explaining to people what the distributed ledger technology is um, and also reminding them that when we're creating applications, when we choose our data storage platform, as a developer, one of the primary questions you will answer is, what is my consistency model, mm -hmm. right? And so if you think about it, and, and, and we, we started uh, the basic consistency model was ACID, right? And so uh, this is the, the, the tightest consistency model. Think SQL Server. When I write a record to a table, it's instantly added to the table. And then the next step was we went to what's called a base consistency model. And so this came about because of Facebook, Twitter, and the big data boom, right? All of a sudden, it was not feasible to write to a database uh, quickly like SQL Server. The best example of this is when you delete a tweet. It takes minutes for that tweet to be deleted. It's because it takes a while for the data to con come to consistency and consensus. With blockchain and DLT, as Eric pointed out, we have a third type of consistency model, and it's called SALT. 
What's interesting is the marketing, right? Because if you take a little bit of base and a little bit of acid, you end up with salt in chemistry. And so in database terms, salt is, is a consistency model that's meant to handle the distributed ledger transaction. So with salt, we say the data will always be consistent, but it might just take some time for it to always be consistent. Mm -hmm. So great point, Eric, what you're saying about blockchain not being a database and pointing out the difference between a distributed ledger transaction uh, and a database. And I just add the consistency and the consensus piece to it. Uh, sure. what, are your, what are your thoughts? I don't know how much to add to that. I mean, perfect description <laughs> of it. I agree <laughs> with it completely. Um, so something like Bitcoin, the blockchain there, it takes time for, th for transactions to get recorded. They get batched up into a block. And that block, on average, takes about 10 minutes to get stored. But even once a block has been added, because of the distributed nature of it, you can't guarantee that your block is truly valid until more blocks have been added on top of it. The general idea is the rule of six. Mm -hmm. After about six blocks have been added past yours, it's now considered valid and completely legitimate. But new blockchains, in particular new enterprise blockchains, are looking to cut that down because we need more transactions because we do want to treat blockchain sort of databasey. We want to make a lot of transactions and quickly. And so there are new consensus algorithms that can allow for almost near instant or you know a couple mm -hmm. second delay on when my block actually is valid and then it can get validated and proved to be valid uh, extremely quick. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Microsoft just released the, uh, a consensus algorithm last week. I haven't had time to research it yet, but there's a new proof of authority uh, mm -hmm. algorithm. Yes, that, right. Yeah, yeah I read the, about that. Yeah, the Azure Workbench uh, has been updated to version 1.3 now. It's on its third revision. And with this third revision, Microsoft actually has its own uh, uh, proof of consensus. It's proof of authority is what they call it. Mm -hmm. I, I like to explain consensus this way. Yeah. Consensus is nothing new. Think about Active Directory. The best example that I like to use is Active Directory because everybody knows about it. You know, what happens when you boot up an Active Directory server? What, it, what happens is it forces an election on the network, right? And, and what happens is that server goes out and it has to determine which Active Directory server has the best record set of all my users and printers on the network. Mm -hmm. And then when it finds it, they all come to consensus, right? And it brings in that Active Directory database onto the node, onto the Active Directory node. This, is, this idea of consensus across nodes is not new at all. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's different is now we're doing consensus in a, in a decentralized world, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets a little bit more complex. Other examples include SQL Server clusters, right? If I bring up a SQL Server, it has to do some consensus algorithm and then come to agreement, etc. So it's fascinating. I, I love drawing the com uh, comparisons and contrasting these earlier technologies to oh, yeah. what people think is all this new crazy stuff. But well, what's <laughs> new about it, which I think is really cool, and again, this is what made me just yeah. geek out on this, was this consensus algorithm, you needed to have consensus against people that don't like each other, that don't yeah. trust each yeah. other, and yeah. that yeah. means something. Yeah. How do you get to a consensus, because in AD, SQL, et cetera, exactly. everyone trusted each other. They're like, yes. if you yeah. say you're in charge, we'll trust you, but here, we can't have that. We can't just have everyone saying, oh, hey, trust me. Yeah. We needed some sort of algorithm to, to prove that. And yeah. what we used for Bitcoin was something called proof of work. The yeah. idea being that if you've done a bunch of work and you've done this, this very hard algorithm, you've completed it, OK, we trust you. You've done the work. We're, gonna, we're all going to agree that we're moving on to the next block, et cetera. Yeah. But proof of work is slow. And so these other ideas of proof of stake and proof of authority that have come out that are really